All right, guys, let's take a few minutes to go through the SMC pneumatics trainer, and we'll look at all the bits and pieces that are on our training boards. So when you walk into the lab, you're going to have one of these guys at each of your stations. Uh, over here <clears throat> on the left-hand side, this is where the air is coming in. The air comes from a little solenoid valve that turns on when you energize uh, the contact or the front of the rim. Uh, the air is going to come in here. You'll be able to regulate that pressure. And then down here, this is going to be a, a filter that's going to take out any impurities before it goes on to our manifold here. So starting with this guy, in order to change the pressure, you've got to lift this guy up. Then you'll see this orange tab here. That means that you'll be able to actually physically turn the adjustment screw there. And on the top of this adjustment screw, you'll see a positive and a negative for increasing and decreasing the pressure. Okay, The air is coming in here from the solenoid at the front of the room. And be careful when you turn these guys on uh, because some donkey for, uh, before you may have just been bored and they may have turned this up to a max. The maximum pressure from the compressor uh, is around 100 PSI. There's no need to have any pressure greater than 30 PSI for any of these pneumatic units. Uh, so be careful if somebody has been bored and they've cranked this all the way up to the maximum pressure. As soon as you turn on this ball valve and allow that pressure to go through, you're now going to have 100 PSI to each of your components. I'll know that you have 100 PSI to each of your components because each, as you're doing your labs, all of the, <clears throat> all the cylinder, cylinders are going to be slamming to their end travel, right? And all of the relays are gonna be slamming as well. And then once you've done a few labs at 100 PSI without actually hurting somebody, then you would have probably destroyed some of the components. So don't be a donkey, keep the pressure low. We only need around like maximum 30 PSI for any of these labs. 100 PSI, somebody's definitely gonna get hurt, okay? Over here, there's a, a lockout valve. So when it's facing you or at 90 degrees to the, to the piping here, then it's closed. In order to allow the flow to go through, you're going to have to push this valve so that it's parallel with the piping. Anywhere between this position and the open position, you'll have air that's uh, exhausting out of the bottom there. So there's really just two positions to this, being the closed and fully pushing this so that it's open. Okay, on the bottom there's a filter here. So this is kind of like a Venturi effect that the air is going to come in. It's going to hit some baffles here. It's going to kind of circulate here and as it does that it's going to whip up against the side of the the condensate drain here and any water that's in that air is going to be smacked up against this kind of plastic housing here and it's going to condense against here and then come down to the drain so every once in a while we'll just go around and like kind of back this off to allow any water to come out of there sometimes you'll find in some plants they have a tube with the solenoid so every once in a while, the solenoid will open uh, and will drain out any air that's coming there. Last thing we want is for air to travel through to each of our components because it's not only going to rust everything in there, but if you have um, something that is lubricating, then that water will mix with the oil on the lubricator and then everything in your piping system will become like a white sludge. And then you're done. You're going to have to replace everything. The filter also has a little air filter here as well to get, through, get rid of any impurities. Okay, that now goes to the air supply manifold. So if we go back one, one uh, slide here, that air travels through, goes to this manifold here. And as soon as you press that ball valve, then the air is going to come up and come to each of these check valves. So no air is going to bleed out of here until you actually push in the rubber tubing. Okay, when you're putting the, the rubber tubing in, then it'll press up against <clears throat> this O-ring here. And then that'll allow the air to escape. Okay, in order to, to pull it out, what you'll have to do is you'll have to press on this plastic piece and then be able to remove the tubing. If you just wrench on the tubing, then you're going to pull the fitting right off of the board. Okay, so be nice and gentle uh, with each of the components. Uh, don't be changing the, the tubing while you have the pressure to the circuit. Turn that ball valve off. Otherwise, somebody's going to get hurt. You're going to get a tube to the, to the eye or something. Okay. Next components we have are the three, two uh, pneumatic push buttons and the selector switch. So all of these guys have the same component in the back of the board. They just have different components on the front. So here we have two push buttons and here we have a selector switch. The two push buttons are momentary. So when you push the push buttons, they're going to bounce back. Whereas the 
selector switch is a maintain. So wherever you leave that selector switch, it'll be maintained in that position. Okay, the terminals that correspond to our one, two, and three from the three, two valve that we talked about in class. There's number one, that's our where our supply goes in. Number two is gonna travel over to either the, the cylinder or to our relays. So this is kind of like our input, this is our output, and then the exhaust being number three is integral to the actual switch. If you mess this up and you bring the supply over to two and then have this come off of number one, you're gonna have air bleeding out of uh, from two to three. Okay, so your supply is gonna come into port number one and then come out of port number two. If any of these components are bleeding air, then just reverse your tubing because you've got air bleeding from two to the integral exhaust on port number three. Okay, and the back of all of those guys, you have this exact same component. So that push button and selector switch are connected into this part right here, but the valving is exactly the same. It's a 3-2, meaning that there are two positions to the switch, and there are three ports, one, two, and the integral exhaust. Okay, you'll notice that with these guys, this is the limit switch on the end of the, the cylinder here. So we have one here for our return and one for the extend. You'll notice that right here, there's an arrow to denote your direction of flow. So just like these push buttons have a direction of flow from one to two, same component here for the limit switch. There's your input there on number one. There's your output there on. All right, guys, so that takes care of our, uh, our limit switch there. You'll notice here, this is the exact same diagram as we have on the board when we were taking this up in class. The spring is denoting the rest position. So you can see here that the supply is blocked. And from two to three, we have that air exhausting out of the system. Once this limit switch is tripped, then it moves over to the other position of the switch and you can see air is gonna travel from port number one up to port number two and the exhaust at port number three is going to be blocked. Okay, the exact same thing is gonna happen when you're doing the push buttons and the selector switch, exact same component. Okay, then we're gonna put on our boards, we've got three double acting cylinders. If you're looking for a single acting cylinder, then there's one in your tackle box. So in the tackle box that's also provided, we've got AND and OR valves, some T's, and we've got a single acting uh, cylinder. This guy's a double acting cylinder in that it has a port here to allow this to extend, and it has a port here so that when we put air to this port, it will cause this guy to retract. Okay, later on, if there's time during the, the course, we'll make use of these uh, position sensors I'm not really sure whether they're Hall Effect or whether they are, uh, I'm pretty sure they're just um, reed switches. So that inside the actual cylinders, there's a magnet. And when that magnet moves across this position sensor, it's going to close that switch and send a signal. So then we can look at our travel, whether it's in the retracted position or in the extended position, and we can send a signal to the PLC. We do that by using these two terminals right here. So these two terminals here correspond to the position sensors at the top. These guys right here correspond to these positions, this position sensor at the top as well. I'm not sure if their polarity is sensitive, uh, but as you're going through, the brown is always positive and the blue is going to be negative if they are polarity sensitive. We can change um, kind of the the outputs or how, <clears throat> how much this guy has cushioning on either side by adjusting each of these, but they're already set so you don't have to fool around with there's that limit switch that we were looking at earlier. So rather than these using these in the beginning, we're gonna use the pneumatic uh, position sensors to look at the travel on each of these cylinders. Just to make note, there is one port right here. On the back of your board, you're gonna have uh, another tank that's in the back there. And we'll be using this in order to make any of our timers. So if you're looking for the, that holding tank for the air for our pneumatic timer, that's your port right there that you're going to tee into. Okay, on the side, on the right-hand side of each of your trainers, you've got a 5-2 pneumatic relay here. So these, this one right here has number one for the supply. Then we've got port two and four as the outputs. It looks like we've got a spring, so there's no port over on this side. So this guy here is a spring. So as soon as we 
release this error on our initiating valve, then this spring is going to return it to the rest position. Okay, rest position, I believe it has air going from one to two. Okay, this one is a five two, so there are two positions to the switch, position one, position two, and there are five ports, one, two, three, four, and five. One is the supply, two and four are the outputs, three and five are the exhausts. Okay, over here on the left-hand side, this is the initiating port. So this is actually going to change the state of the output. So the, we always have pressure going to terminal number one, and depending on whether we have air to here, that's going to determine whether we have air coming out of two or four. The way to work this guy is that whatever this spring, whatever side that spring is on, that corresponds to this port. So in the rest position, air is going to go from one out to two. As soon as we send a signal into this relay, then the air will switch over to the pipe on the other side that corresponds to that signal. Right? So in that case, with initiating, air comes in here, and air goes from the 1 and out of port 4. If we stop that air from going to this initiating valve, the spring takes over, brings it back to the rest state, and air is then going to go from 1 to 2. Okay, in addition to that, once we get into the PLCs, we may make use of the relays, so the exact same 5-2 valve. We have a spring return over here, but the initiating uh, portion, instead of being an air signal, this is going to be a 24 volt DC signal that we're going to send from our PLCs. Okay, this one here is a, again a 5-2, but this one has uh, two initiating ports. On the previous uh, photos, we had a spring here as the rest position. This guy is going to stay in the exact same position that uh, for the last um, air that went into each of these ports. So if your last signal came to this port, then air will be going from 1 out to 2. If your last signal came into this port, then the air is going to go from 1 to 4. Okay, You could leave it there for a week, come back, and it will still be in that position. There are no springs whatsoever in, in this one. It's all dependent on where you put your signals in. And again, Air is always supplied from the supply to port number one. This port corresponds to the output air coming out of two. And if you send a signal on this side, then this number four corresponds to that signal coming in. Okay, and again, once we get into uh, the PLCs, then we can make use of the relays. Again, this is a 5-2, but we can have a relay on either side to initiate it. Okay, you can just make out on this photo right here. Uh, that there are some pneumatic indicators as well. So if you want to have some lights come on when you have the extend or the retract, then you can tee into these guys right here. So there's a port for the green and a port for the red. Okay, in your tackle box, you're also going to be looking for um, so that some other logic <coughs> um, components. So this guy is the shuttle valve, and this guy is going to provide us with the, the OR function. So you can see that um, you can have air coming in on this port, and if air is coming in on this port, then it's going to block the air from escaping on the other side. So you can have two inputs here and a single output, and that's going to give you the OR function in that you can have air coming in one side, and it will block on the other side. So air coming in this side will go out. If you have a signal coming in from the left-hand side, it will take this ball and move it over here, there isn't really a ball in there, but it will move the valve over so that it blocks the air from escaping this port, and the air will then travel from this input and out the other terminal. Okay, It says right here, in and in and out. They're also color-coded. right? So two ins, one output, and to distinguish between this guy and the end valve, right on here embossed on the front, there's our symbol for the shuttle valve or the OR valve that we've just talked about. All right, guys, the other component you're going to have in your tackle box uh, is an AND valve. So it looks exactly the same as the shuttle valve. You can see the difference between the two in that uh, they're a little bit different in size. But if you're just looking in here embossed on the front, again, you're going to have uh, the symbol for the AND circuit. This guy needs to have uh, two pressures, two basically equal pressures going in here and in here. And then that will allow the air to come up and out of the output. 
if you had just air coming in one side, it would close this off and that would block the air going to the output. Okay, you can see here that if you just had the single air in, then it's blocked from going to the output. Single air in, blocked from going to the output. If we have basically two equal pressures, then the air is going to go out. So that allows us to have that AND function in that we need this and this pressure in order for us to have an output out of this switch. Okay, right here again, input, input, and the output. Last component you're going to have in the, aside from T's, uh, in these guys look like a T, uh, but they're in your tackle box and they're the last component, the one-way flow control valve. So these guys, you can control the, the amount of flow that's going through there by cranking down on this component right here. Once it gets to that uh, selected pressure, then there's actually a lock ring here because a lot of these components uh, would vibrate out in the field so you could lock it in at that pressure. So just release this, then you can have the full control over the, the flow. Uh, the symbol for this guy is right here. There's a check valve, and then we've got the symbol here, that's similar kind of like to a Venturi tube. So in this case, if the air is coming in this way, it's going to seat the ball, and then all that airflow would have to go through the flow restrictor. So air in this direction, from left to right, is going to be the controlled flow or the reduced flow. If we have air going in the opposite direction, well then it has a <clears throat> high restriction and a low restriction path. It's always going to take the low restricted path. So it's going to come over here, push against this ball, and we'll have full pressure going in the opposite direction. So the one-way flow control valve will be able to control the flow, but only in one direction. In this case, if we have air going from the left to the right, this will seat the ball, a check valve, and the air will have to go through the flow restrictor. All right, guys, that's it for the, the components on the board. Uh, go to uh, the next video for the SMC pneumatic components um, number two, and then I'm actually going to show you on the boards how each of the components work. Thanks very much.